Now, before the secrets, I would like to ask you first, Sabina, what is the most important question to ask about the real estate investment? Ito yung parating tinatanong. All the seminars during the Q&A, never did, did we miss this question. Is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to own real estate during this crisis? Always, always, that's a question. Now, so I answer them with a question. I ask them, if you have money, if you have investable funds stashed somewhere, not using it, uh, is it making money in the bank? Definitely, 100% not. Do you want to bet on, on, on stocks? I don't think so. So what is the most relatively safer investments? So real estate. Now, when you want to buy a property, when is the smartest time to buy? If it's uh, when the price is low or when the price is high? You know the answer to that. When the price is low, when the payment terms are friendly, when the options are wider, or to bounce back. Okay. When it bounces back, prices are higher, terms are more stiff, and choices are lesser. So, but the question is, not everybody can afford to buy now. Exactly. You see, during crisis, and I've been through three major crises now, uh, Hindi kasama yung midlife crisis. Now, uh, they ask, they, they ask, you know what I learned from, from my investors before? When times are bad, this is the time that they look around and look for investment opportunities. If you're familiar with the Corinthian village, those who really made money there were those who bought properties there right after they were bombing right after the coup d'etat. Why? Because these expert investors know that that is temporary and that is a good location. So, but then before only the rich can do this. Only the people with cash can do this. Uh, so that's the reason why they, they are the people who, who make money because they're the ones who can take advantage of opportunities like this. Mamiya, you will see why you are in a very good position. Another thing is that, bakit real estate? Why should I invest in real estate? Number one, it still offers, especially in the long term. Real estate is always long term. Yes, there will be times that, yes, I can do flipping. Uh, Agents sometimes will tell you, mom, you buy now. Or oh, sorry, you buy now in the next year if you flip nothing. Yes, it may happen. But always, uh, always uh, uh, condition your mind that real estate is a long-term investment. So in the long term, it offers always, always lower risks and better returns. Okay. And then lesser capital required. Before, you have to come up with the full amount. Uh, when you invest in stocks, hindi naman pwedeng partially invest mo. You invest your funds, you invest your money. But real estate, right now, there are a lot of very good terms. It can produce a stable income if you know where to buy, if you know when to buy, if you know what to buy. And then it is less sensitive in volatility. Volatility refers to the, to the frequency of movement. You see, you've heard of the uh, global financial crisis. The whole world went down, went negative, negative 1.5. Properties, so say, Sankbagsakan. You know, in the Philippines, I'll show you later, it did not even move. Bef because before it was, it was supposed to move already, we already recovered. Now, and also right now, do you know that this is the most appreciated investment by everyone? Why? Uh, sino mga nag-invest ngayon sa 
Allahas, Rello, Sakotche. Where are they? What are anong gamit nyo ngayon? But right now, all our houses are protecting us from the virus. The byword now is stay home. All over the world, they tell you, stay home. How can you stay home if you don't have a home? So right now, it is the only investment that we have that is protecting us from the virus. And all billionaires made their money in real estate. All billionaires made their money in real estate. Now, sabi, tatlo lang. If everything uh, goes away, mawala sa lahat, only three things would be very necessary. Food, shelter, clothing. Food, shelter, clothing. Shelter. It will always be a necessity. Now, one of my colleagues, who is also one of the most respected uh, uh, economic advisors that we have, who's also an advisor to the, to the uh, ADB, said, for the long term, I would still bet my last centavo on real estate. For the long term, I would still bet my last centavo on real estate. See, sa akin niya, uh, this is something that I shared with everyone. The only investment that you made before that is working for you right now is the property where you are safely quarantined with your family. Or yung property na pinapalis. My properties na nakalis ngayon, I'm not doing anything, but I still get collection for my tenants. Okay? Or kung meron kang nag-invest ka naman sa farm and it's bearing fruits, then your property is also making money for you. Now, I will not mix words anymore. I, we have to admit that we already entered the recession. The recession uh, as early as July because it was our second quarter na naka negative tayo. So, yes, hindi, uh, hindi na kailangan bulahin ng tao. Yes, we are in a recession. However, that, that's the main point. That's the main point. I'll show you why. You see, for the past uh, 20 years, we've been through three crises, major crises. I, I am sure some of you, some of you may have uh, witnessed the time nung meron mga coup d'etat. That was actually the time, the peak na maraming, nag-start na maraming nag-migrate sa ibang, nag-migrate sa ibang countries or nag-OFW. Nag okay, so during that time, that was one of the worst and uh, worst crises that we had, both man-made and natural. We had the Pinatubo, we have the coup d'etat, we have the Ormoc, we have the earthquake, we have the 12-hour brownouts, we have dollar at 60, we have interest rates at, at, at 30, we have 12-hour brownouts, everything was there. And then one in 97. So that was a time na merong, uh, is this the, the Asian financial crisis. We had that also. So with the, with the four different presidents, we had uh, different crises. That's what you iba naman yun. That's different from what we are having right now. True. I agree with you 100%. However, one thing common about it is that during those times, we were in the dark. There was the same feeling, which is the feeling of uncertainty. The feeling of when will this end? What will I do tomorrow? What will happen to my business? What will happen to me? Okay, so uh, that is one thing common. It went up, it went down. However, one thing that remained constant was that the growth was consistent. The growth was consistent. The growth in the property was consistent. It still grew by an average, even during the worst time, but an average of about 5 to 6% over the long term. Whatever you do, it will grow. Real estate will appreciate. Now, every time there's a down, every time 
uh, there's a correction. I call it a correction. The correction is what I call an opportunity for the next wave. A correction is an opportunity for the next wave. I'm sure some of you now, uh, nalapita na kayo ng mga agents last year. And you knew the prices last year. For the past nine years, it went up and up and up and up and up. If you miss that one, if you miss that one, how will you make money? Now, if you miss that one, good for you because there's an opportunity now. There's this correction. So the correction is an opportunity for the next wave. Now your choice, do you want to catch? Do you want to come in again pag nagtas na? Or capture it now? You see, <clears throat> we are not new to crisis. Lahat ng crisis setup pinagdaanan na natin. But the thing is that amidst these historical events, our economy continued to grow. Despite all the precedents that we had, of course, all the precedents that then uh, not perfect, but each of these presidents were able to contribute something which laid one of the fundamentals. Our, our fundamentals, the economic fundamentals are now very strong. And when the other crisis happened, our economy was really down. Keep in mind that when the, the when this pandemic hit, we were at the we were performing very very well. We were consistent at six percent for for many years. Solid. So that's the difference. Also, see, this is we're not different to this. So we have learned our lesson. Our economic managers already know what to do. We have that experience. Now, last uh, last July. Oh, last, last August, the, the Banco Central said our economy is better positioned to weather this current crisis. Unlike before, we were not ready. Right now, nobody's ready for this, but right now, we, it hit us when we are stronger. Medyo healthy tayo. Kung parang, parang COVID, pag tinamaan ka, meron ka ng sakit, you're dead. That's why they said, if the best thing to do is to keep yourself healthy. If it hits you when you're healthy, sometimes you don't even know that you already have COVID. You're not positive, they call it IgG or what? No. Now, ito yun, our strong fundamentals, we, uh, which I will, uh, I will discuss in detail later. See, especially right now, do you know that the peso is the most stable currency in Asia now, and it is getting stronger. Uh, uh, we did this, we started this, this, uh, this uh, road shows last May. Those who bought last May using their dollars at 50. Because now it's, it's what, 48, 35 or 48, 50. So parang dun pala nakasave, nakasave na sila. And our peso is just getting stronger. See, the first Metro Pacific sees the economy contracting 8 to 9% in 2020, but the recovery in 2021. Uh, and this was just uh, last August 14. Okay, another thing that's... Uh, that's unique with this, with this, with what's happening now. During the time when it hit that and the even crisis before, the interest rates were really high, at twenty-seven percent or sixteen percent. Now, we were, we are at the lowest rate of about two point five percent. For twenty years, it never happened. Never, it's lowest in twenty years. Now, what happens if the, the, the interest rate is lower? The trend will show you that the, the take up for residential always spikes up. So that's, that's good for the property sector. So our, our interest rate now is now at the lowest at 2.8, 2.7, 2.8. See, now inflation is, is, is controlled. 
Inflation natin was highest in September 2018 at 6. But immediately, our economic managers were able to address that. And now we are steady at 2.5. And they're seeing that 2.5, 2.6 to, to stay until the end of the year. Dollar reserves natin, it's hitting almost 100 billion already. We have enough dollars. Now, <clears throat> uh, is the Philippines prepared for COVID-19 recession? This question is most an academic because it hit us already. Nobody was prepared for this. But Sabina, the country will have a potential rebound to 2021. Because Sabina, it's not only the IMF. I will show you the other credit rating agencies looking at the Philippines rebound by next year. Why? Why? There must be some reason. Ano nakikita nila? Ano ba yung key drivers ng real estate? What makes real estate uh, appreciate? What makes real estate uh, in demand? Number one, nagbago ba? Nagbago ba yung key drivers for residential real estate? Number one, urban growth population. You see, sabi nga, they don't make land anymore but the population is growing. Unlike other countries, like let's say Japan, Japan in the next 20 years will have a negative growth. Now they're at 104 and by 2015, they'll be about 98 million. So Patras, because they have a very old population. Same thing with Europe. China is, is getting very old also. The Philippines has the sexiest demographic profile. See, uh, ano rin, ang, ang, ang balance then male, female, is almost 50-50. And then, but the most important is yung age, ng, yung productive age ng demographics natin. You see, that age, when you're 25 to about 39, that is your most productive years. People buy real estate before from age 35 to 39. That's a peak buying, that's a peak buying age. However, recently for the past three years, because of the income potential, or I mean the income capacity of the millennials now, no? especially those in the BPOs and especially those who are in the gig economy, the, 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 the young people now are very entrepreneurial. No? There are young, I call them kids, buying at 22 years old, 25 years old. Now you see this population growing up. Everybody who passes through that 25 to 39, 25, 39, they are the ones who are buying houses. They are the ones who are buying, who are buying condominiums. They are the ones renting condominiums. Unlike before, uh, yung anak mo, 49 years old, 59 years old na, nakatira pa doon sa lola, ay eh, nakatira pa doon sa nanay niya. May pamilya ng malaki, malalaki na yung mga anak, nakatira pa rin doon sa bahay ng nanay niya. Okay. But now, but now, it's just like in the US. I mean, after they graduate, they work, they want to be independent. It's either they buy their own condo unit or they rent. If they cannot afford to rent by themselves, they share the rental with, with, their, with their colleagues. And this is what pushes the demand for condominiums, yung lease potential. So that's, that's, a, that's a very, very thick market. Parang ilog, everybody will have to pass through that. That's the reason why real estate will be in demand at least for the next 20, 20 years. Uh, we have this young, skilled, educated, and English-speaking population. Yun ang isang alas natin. That's one of our biggest advantage. Next is the BPO housing, the BPO employees housing. Since April, May, June, July, all the all the economic uh, ma uh, uh, managers or consultants, all the other companies 
have different projections ng demand, especially sa office na. However, pagdating sa BPO, consistent yan from April, May, June, July, August. In their projections, it is always consistent na there will be a growth in the BPOs. Maybe the voice will not be uh, with, will not be as much in demand, but the KPO, the knowledge process outsourcing, will be very very much in demand, and it will be more in demand after this uh, pandemic. Why? All the other companies in the other parts of the world who have uh, taken a hit, they will have to cut their costs. If they want to cut their costs, they have to have cheaper employment, but deliver the same skills. So where do they go? They outsource those uh, other job requirements to other countries. And who's the number one? We played number one, number two with India. So tayo pa din yan. So uh, the BPO uh, will be very much in demand. So hindi, uso na work from home That's true but not all BPOs can work from home. They're looking at about 10 or 10, 10 or 15 percent lang ang kaya na pwede mag work from home because there are some data that are so sensitive that it cannot be brought in their own laptops. They have to, to control that, number one. Number two, even if they reduce the number of people, they have to increase the space inside the office. If before, uh, the requirement is about five square meters per, per head. Now they, it might be about eight. So fewer people, bigger space. So there's going to be that, that demand for it. Now, when these people are in the city, they will need housing. So sila yung, de, yung, yung demand then for leasing. So those who are investing in properties, that's, that's your market. Now, sino pa? Uh, now, this is another thing. So those is a resurgence of the BPOs. And I'll show you another uh, fresh, fresh news. Huh? This was taken last, uh, what's the date? Three days ago. I'm sure you've heard uh, last July, our, our, our uh, unemployment rate was at 17.6%. Everybody was really was really very much scared during that time, but last month it went down. Now, nung nag nag the GCQ na went down now to to ten percent. So why it is only because kaya employment because the movement were restricted. Nobody was allowed to work. So they see this one easing off. Okay, so uh, again, these are just figures that shows you that it's all going up. The demand is going up. The numbers are going up. The contributions is going up. The income that they're, the billions of dollars that they're bringing to the Philippines is just increasing. And good thing about the BPOs is that they earn here, they spend here. <clears throat> now, the next one and one of the biggest drivers, Kayo the overseas uh, Filipino heroes that, that we have. And you are in the best position, just like during my opening, uh, not everybody uh, is blessed with this situation, with this uh, position. So I mean, let's say about 10 million documented are, are abroad and there are about another 4 million who are undocumented. Now, you will say, Hindi ba dami ng ano, daming, uh, dami ng umuwi? Uh, as of last week, I think it's about close to 600,000 who were repatriated, who, who, who returned here. Okay, true, and that's the headline. However, one thing that they don't realize is that 85% of those who were deployed are deployed in the areas where, which, where, is, where it is about three to four hour flight from, from the Philippines. So most of them are in Asia, uh, in, in the Asian region. No? Now, 
uh, 5.4 in the US, 6.4 in Europe. 85 in Asia, 5.4 in, in the US. You see kung gaano kalaki, no? However, when it comes to remittance, the remittance of uh, US is almost twice the amount of the whole Asia. Okay? Because of the volume. So, bakit dahil ba dun sa, dun sa, of course, because of the, the amount that they earn, the earning capacity that they have. Another thing that people, not everybody knows, is the nature of job. You see, for those deployed, they did a study in 2017, na 36.6% or 37.6% are in elementary jobs. 37.6% are into elementary jobs. Ano tawag doon? These are skill one in the ISCO level. Ito yung uh, either uh, street sweepers or caretakers or helpers. They're making about 18 to 23,000 a month. So ito yung, uh, of course, less skill. That's the reason why pag nagkaroon ng konting uh, crisis, sila yung unang unang pino uwe. That's where the volume is. However, even if hindi nangyari to, even if there's no crisis like this, uh, these people are not yet uh, uh, able to, to invest in money because 18,000 is major okay. masigip. So they're not, they're not yet the market. So even if they went here, the demand for housing is still there. Now, you tell me, oh, that was a 2017 survey reported in 2018. That's true. However, in 2018, they did one, which was reported last June 4, 2020. If it was 37% before, now it's 39.6% who are into elementary jobs. Ito yung mga pinauwi. Ito yung mga pinauwi. Of course, let's say, sa, sa oil, sa oil fields, yung mga laborers doon, or doon sa construction, medyo yung demand, medyo mababa. So, they had to let go of, of, of some people. So, yan yun. That's the reason why the, the, but those who are into, let's say, healthcare, pharma, tech, or professionals, they are still the ones making very good money. And I suppose all of you who are here are in that, in that bracket. Now, all of the bullion remittances is expected to drop by about four to five billion. Yes, that may be possible and true. However, look, uh, still the demand, the demand or the OFWs who are still there very much productive are by the millions, by the millions. At least maybe another eight or nine million are still doing very well. And how many of these need real estate investments? How many of them meron ng investment sa real estate? How many of them na-realize na na kailangan ko pala mag-invest sa real estate? Maybe to own or to, 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 uh, to own or maybe to uh, save for the future. Now, OFW remittances and take up. You will see that there was a drop in the first quarter. Of course, first quarter covers March. Kailan tayo nag lockdown? March 17. No movement. ECQ, May, April, May, June. However, I'd like to tell you that after noon, first uh, half of April, when people have already adjusted, some developers are enjoying a lot of sales. One, because the OFWs in the other countries are locked down also. They have nothing to do online. And they see what's happening in the Philippines. And they see all these opportunities. You see? So, and some developers are prepared to do online. Like, let's say, Century Property. Century Property is one of the pioneers in online selling. As early as about 2010, uh, they've been selling online, international. Now, gig economy. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about gig economy. 
Ito yung version, ito yung modern version ng before na tinatawag natin underground economy. Yung mga informal, uh, informal uh, business like, you know, Tinder sa palengke, GP driver, some, some of these are even making more money than the, the minimum wage earners na nasa office. Ganda, kwapo naka, naka, naka makeup, but they're making what? Minimum wage, 15,000, 16,000. But this Tinderas, uh, nyo pa yung mga jolly jeep pa? They're making thousands by the day. It's not glamorous, but they make thousands by the day. No gig economy, this, are the, the, this is what our millennials call their, their side hustles. Iba hindi na side hustles, even social media marketing. Okay. Uh, or they, do, they, they sell their skills they sell their skills or their time. Okay. And these are the kids who are making money. So that's, that's, that's big. Now, last July 30, during the Collier's property briefing, it has been reported that ito yung red is the one which is badly hit or immediately, immediately uh, reactive. Yung nandito sa right ninyo, okay yung hindi masyadong tinatamaan. Ito yung medyo delayed mag -react. And real estate is one of them. Real estate, hindi pa masyado gumagalaw. You see, in this chart, uh, the yellow ones is the GDP. Okay. Kita mo, nag-hit na yung GDP, focus on the center, global financial crisis, a dive. But look at the blue ones, the average capital value. It was still very steady. And since the recover sa agad ang GDP natin, hindi pa nga, hindi pa nagre-react yung capital values natin. Nagka-recover yung GDP, kaya tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung, yung growth natin. Okay? Now, kaya ang hirap pumanap ng opportunity. Now there's this uh, correction, kaya it's somehow some investors are really looking at this opportunity at this opportunity okay this is a more close-up look of the the earlier graph during the global financial crisis you see it did not move it did not move so in 2020 first quarter yes not react but you see the charts now going back and expected to to go up again 2021, it will start going up again. So uh, it's up to us when we want to position. And it's not me saying this, World Bank, ADB, Moody's Analyst, Analytics, S&P Global, they're the ones saying that we will have this recovery in 2021, driven again also by private consumption. Bakit walang private consumption? Gusto kong kumain, hindi ako makakain. Gusto kong mag-shopping, hindi ako makapag-shopping. There's money intact, hindi magastos, hindi umiikot. But once the movement is free again, money will be in circulation. Okay. Now, look at this, September 2. September 2, so again, this is a very updated uh, report. GDP rebound in 2021 to range from 6 to 8%. We finished at about 5.6%. Uh. And then private construction ngayon, imagine ilang months na sarado lahat ng construction company. I mean, the, the construction on-site. Talagang babagsak yung, I mean, tataas yung unemployment mo. It's not because there are no jobs. It's because they cannot work. There's a big difference between there's no work and they cannot work. So nagresume ngayon yung private construction. And then as early as last June, of W remittances nag-take ulit by about 7%. It increased again by 7%. Okay, so uh, again, this is something unique. I'll go back. You see, dito, the world was already uh, the world was already diving, but the Philippine economy was still very strong. Now I'll give you another survey. So 
where are the people going? What are they looking for now? Lamodi is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, property search engine dito sa, sa Philippines. So, they did a study. So, during the ECQ, property seekers are looking at fringe cities and provincial areas to make the most out of their budget. One, uh, two things, kasi. Okay, of course, in Manila, kasi, it's, it's too expensive. So what can, your, what can your 3 million, 4 million buy? But when you go up, because prices are what? 250, 320,000 per square. So the property seekers are now looking at the fringes. If not the fringes, provincial areas. Why? One is cheaper, pangalawa, we're, we're getting into that work from home, uh, work from home setup, okay? So instead of being cramped in a, in a, a tiny space, we can now work in, in a better environment. So, meron bang nag-lease? Meron ba tayong market for tenants? Okay, in their, in their search, more than half of the searches in Ramudi during the ACQ are for rental. So there's there's a market for buyers, there's a market for sell for, for tenants. Now, among all the regions na in demand, what is uh, uh, what are the areas na hinahanap nila? Okay, Batangas is is uh, is good because Batangas is also growing by eight uh, percent. Two regions that are growing by 7 to 8 percent is Batangas and Pampanga. NCR, 4 percent. So, mas malaki pa ang growth ni Batangas and Pampanga kaysa sa NCR. Okay. So, another thing, a lot of developments going on in Pampanga. So, I mean, kung ako yun, when will I position? Pag nandun na lahat ng government offices, Pag nandun na yung rail station, pag nandun na yung airport na, I mean, patapos na tayo yung, yung uh, airport. I mean, the, the Clark International Airport. Or, puposisyon ako ngayon. Ang gusto lang nila is, one, right now, of course, people are expecting discounts. And developers are giving it. Discounts, promos. That's why the... the 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 buyers are taking advantage of this big discounts uh, friendlier payment terms okay so uh this is what the, the the buyers want and now since it's a buyer's market developers are giving into this demand very rare itong uh, opportunity nata. so any recommendation to call your buyers one, take advantage of better pricing and discounts offered in the market. Take advantage. This will not happen again during good times. Mag, mag request ka lang ng extra discount. Mampa pa prove ko pa ho. Mampa pa prove ko pa ho. It will never happen again. Consider projects located outside of Metro Manila. It's not me saying this, but the biggest, uh, one of the biggest uh, consultancy firms. Consider projects outside Metro Manila. And then constantly monitor mortgage rates. And then what are the units that are adaptable to work from home? You may have a small unit. You may have a small unit, but then that's your sleeping area. But then when you go out, oh, there's, there's, there's the park. Okay, Kanina, when I was watching the, the video, there's that beach. Work from home, nandun ka sa beach. Work from home, nandun ka sa gym. Work from home, nandun ka sa lounge. Uh, I mean, wouldn't you want that kind of lifestyle? Now, price correction, partly tempered by lower supply. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in 2019, prices have reached levels of 600,000 per square. There are four projects in, in, in the metro who have reached 450, 620,000 per square. Okay, one in, there's, there, there's a couple in the, in Ayala and then some in BGC. You know, they reach that levels. What does that tell you? That is the price now that the market can absorb, can afford. In the Bay Area, umabot na 350,000 per square. 
and people are still buying. So that means that's a potential na itataas and market can still absorb. So if you find properties of 100, 110,000 per square, uh, you see already the potential ng, ng growth. You see the potential ng income na itataas pa niya. See, so, so grab that. Now, they did a study, the economists did a study, which emerging market ang pinakadelikado and sino yung pinakamalakas based on four financial pillars. One, ano yung public debt, the foreign debt, the cost of borrowing, and the revenue reserve cover. And out of 66 countries, Philippines was number six that is most likely to emerge quicker during this pandemic. Okay. We are number six in the world in ranking. We are number one in the ASEAN region. See, a lot of people don't know this. And nakita kasi headline, headline. Masama, lahat headline. But the Philippines economic fundamentals are still very strong. And not only that, you see, they did a study, what are the 10 best countries to invest after COVID? But sabi nga, when will you invest? Pag after COVID na? Or you just have to look for the direction. Who's going to perform better? So you invest earlier. Number seven, Philippines. Okay. Hey, pang number seven, Philippines. Okay. Sige. Where do you want to invest? Oh, you want to invest in Singapore? How much? Kaya mo? Okay, go invest in Singapore. You invest in UK? You invest in Poland? Will you invest in Indonesia? Will you invest in India? Australia? Maybe especially those who are already there in Australia. But the most practical for your budget, for your budget, and most practical for the long term, still the Philippines. Philippines. It's not me saying it's the CEO. Okay. Now, last September 3, I'm sure some of you uh, have heard of Dr. Bernie Villegas. Dr. Bernie Villegas is one of the most important and one of the most prominent uh, economists in the Philippines who has served several, uh, who has seen several uh, administrations. So, he had this forum last uh, September 3 in the Asia CEO Forum. It, it's the same forum where I'm going to speak on, on Thursday. Now, uh, he said, the 10 leading emerging markets will, that will dominate, dominate the global market in the next decade. India, number two is Philippines. And it's not even Dr. Villegas who said that. It was based on the Oxford economics. Okay, so uh, we just need to believe in, in the Filipino people. We have to believe in the Filipino people, what we have, okay? Now, question, ano ba strategy mo? Ito na yung papunta na tayo sa secret. What's your investment objective? What's your strategy? You want purely appreciation? So you buy now and then you hold and then you sell at, in the future. Well, that's, that's good. Now, that's why if you do that strategy, it's very good that you, you position now, you, you buy low, hold, and then you sell when it has recovered. That's one. Now, you want positive cash flow on rentals. Uh, oh, this, is my, this is my strategy because I'm always for the long term. I have four, four girls, I have four daughters. So... My strategy is to buy and buy uh, small units, small units, so that uh, when I retire, that will be my, that will be my 401, that will be my, my retirement fund. So uh, by that time, right now, who's paying rent? Who's paying for my amortization? My tenants. I get positive cash flow. Kahit konti lang, I get positive cash flow. My tenants are paying for my rent, for my amortization. And when I'm done with that, with those payments, then uh, I'll be retired. So I'll have 
a couple of, uh, of uh, properties na pwede na kung doon kumuha ng, ng, ng rent, uh, pambili mo ng maintenance, or if you need money, sell one, sell one, sell one, sell small ones. Easier to sell, even double the price. Okay, because it is going to be affordable. So that's, for me, that's my, my strategy. I don't sell, I don't sell. Now, pwede naman, you rent, you hold, and then when the time comes, you can unload, you sell. Pwede yun. The good thing about that is that you don't have to spend the full amount. You don't have to spend the full amount because you can just pay the equity and then maybe get a bank loan or if you have developers who are offering deferred payment terms and lets you uh, use the unit, it's also possible. Then rent it out, rent it out, have positive cash flow or even break even until the market uh, goes back and then you sell. You see, you can even make almost 100% from the cash out, not from the total amount, but from the cash out that you have. Okay, so that's another strategy. Now, what are the secrets back in investing during the crisis? Number one, you find good deals. Find good deals. It's not only dahil mura. Yes, mura nga, but then sobrang dami ng competition. Kaya pala mura. They're killing each other with the price. Okay, so it's not always porket mura. Look at the supply in the area. Look at the demand in the area. Look at the uniqueness of the property. It's not always a, always a price. Eh, kung kunyari, mura mga nako, but there are thousands of units in the same building and thousands of units around the area. And you're all the same. What's your edge? What's your edge? So again, it's not yet the price. It's not the price. Look at the potential of the property. Don't look at the property. Don't, sabi nga, don't use your sight. Use your vision. Don't use your sight, use your vision. What is the potential of this property? What is going to happen in this area? What is the development that's going to happen here? Look at the potential of the property. So again, price is good. Terms is uh, very, very good. But the potential of the property is the thing that you have to look at. Okay. Now also, for now, we'll focus on residential. Unless mahabat talaga PC mo, let, let's talk commercial. Let's talk industrial. If you have a big amount, I can help you. Our other company can help you. If you want to, to develop, go ahead. But if we're talking about residential, ito muna tayo nga. Now, don't invest all your excess cash. Very common sense. Uh, I mean, spend something that you can forget for the next two years. Okay. Spend something that you can forget for the next two years. Or you monthly, especially the monthly. Uh, if it's a monthly amortization, that will not hurt your budget. By all means, do it now. If you have that budget, that will not hurt your, your, your if you have that stash, which will not hurt your, your monthly budget, put it in real estate. Put it in real estate, okay? But don't invest, of course, all your cash. Now, find pre-selling projects, of course. However, however, if you have enough stash, if you have enough investable funds, if you have enough funds that you can uh, forget, I, I, as I mentioned, for the next two years, find the property na RFO ready for occupancy, which has a good um, rental potential. Okay. At this point, at this, at this time, it may not be uh, too easy to find a tenant which will give you a positive cash flow. Don't worry about it because rental rates uh, are on a yearly basis. So you can always increase it. But the good thing is that just so that hindi siya maging vacant, you control the price. 
you control your rental. If you want to rent it high, na say yun. You want to rent it low, parang kagad, na say yun. But you have control. That's the reason why the thing I love in real estate is that the risk depends on how I control it. The risk depends on me. Okay. Risk is all about how you manage, uh, how much control do you have. Okay. Now, so if you can afford to pay the, the, the equity for a ready for occupancy unit, better because either you can use it, you can use, you can let your loved ones use it, you can, or you can rent it out. Okay. But the good thing there is that you're doing it, you're doing it at the present price, at the present low price, at the present good terms. Now, you have seen the facts. And by now, you have realized that the Philippines has always been resilient as a nation. People, the nation, uh, because of the people. Now, by now, you know that this too shall pass. This is temporary. This will not be forever. This will not even take two years, maybe. And even the international credit rating agencies believe in our strong rebound next year because of our strong economic fundamentals. Okay. And by now you have already seen the wisdom and practicality in buying during periods of correction. Again, the period of correction is an opportunity to ride the next wave. So, you answer the question. When do you think now is a better time to own your own home? Own your own home. If you don't want to invest just to own your own home. Your own home, which is an upgrade of lifestyle. It's not just a, a four wall thing. Don't you want a home na where your kids can be like, let's say, I saw the one in, in Azure North, Pampanga. No? Pampanga is, a, is in central Luzon, which is a landlocked area, well and too big. And you have the beach there in the center of the city. That's an creative lifestyle, lifestyle. Don't you want your kids to be, to be there? So when is the best time? If you want to move there, when is the best time? Next year, pag nakarecover na, pag tapos na, or when you can still afford it now. So when do you want to, to own it? When the interest rates are higher? Or gusto mo makatipid sa interest rates? Or gusto mo bang maunahan na naman pag nagdatingan na naman dito yung foreign investors? Because when they want to take advantage of their strong dollars pa ngayon. While it is still strong, eh papano kasi if peso gets stronger, that's why they want to take advantage. We're getting inquiries from still from foreign uh, people because one, prices now in the Philippines for them are still very, very cheap. So when do you want to buy? Pag naunahan na naman nila tayo. Or do you think it will be more advantageous for you if you avail of the prime units at specially discounted prices? Especially those are RFOs now. Tapos magaganda pang payment terms. Tapos lower interest rates pa. I mean, uh, I think the answer is obvious. And only you can answer that. Now, here is the ultimate secret. Ultimate, ultimate secret. Which is my premise kanina. If before, it was only the rich, the rich gets richer because they can afford to take advantage of opportunities like this. Because may cash sila. But the good thing that's happening now is that you don't need that much cash. You have enough for reservation. You have, you have enough for the monthly. Lock, lock the price of today for a potential of selling it tomorrow. You don't have to come up with the full amount today. Unlike before. Before kasi hindi mo uso pre-selling. They want to buy a property, they buy it. They want to buy, they want to land back, they buy it. But they have to pay full. They have to pay in cash. Not all of us are in the position to do that. But now, uh, if you are in the position 
to invest during bad times. This is a time that uh, gives us the opportunity to make money when the good times come. Okay, so that's the secret of those who are investing in real estate. Okay, now, uh, so the key secret there is that not everybody's in a good position to invest during bad times. Okay, so I hope I was able to share something useful, something uh, uh, that you can think about, and so I hope you've learned something today that you can use for your strategies. Okay, I thank you, and if you have uh, questions, if you want to know more about what's happening in the Philippines every day, go to realsay.ph. But then again, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Stay home and uh, stay safe. Thank you very much, Sir Andy, for revealing the secrets in investing. Now uh, we will be opening the question and answer screen. So we have here a few questions um, gathered from our attendees today, sir. So I would like to share the, some questions. Yes. So first question. Will there be a real estate bubble in the Philippines? No. A big no. And I, I'm not the only one saying this. It's, as I've mentioned earlier, for the past five months, all, all these webinars, all the seminars, nobody was saying that there will still be a real estate bubble. But one thing you will hear is that we still have a shortage of six million housing units. In some areas though, okay, uh, let me qualify that. In some areas, uh, in, in the, in, in, especially in the metro, there are some areas which, where they have overbuilt. But you see, the difference between other countries and in the Philippines, in other countries, you have to build before you sell. Build, 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 and then you sell. That's why there was an over, there's an oversupply. You see in the Philippines, there's what they call the pre-selling. The developers pre-sell, and when they reach a certain point, that's the time when they start the construction. Otherwise, if they don't hit a certain percentage, let's say they don't even hit 20%, but to two years now, then in very, very, very rare cases, they, they abort the project and then return, return the money. But what I'm trying to say is that when you see buildings going up, going up, those buildings have already been sold significantly. So that means no only young demand before they give the supply. So again, bubble, uh, especially if you know where, if you know where to, 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 I mean, to, to, to buy, you don't have to worry about the real estate bubble. Shortage, meron pa. Shortage, big, big shortage. Okay, thank you, sir, for answering. So there's no bubble, and the pre-selling is actually helping the market or the developer gauge, no, the success of the property. Okay, no. So we have another question, sir. What are the factors that makes our property va property our peso value stable? Sorry. Okay. Uh, this one is one for the economists, no? Maybe it's because one, our dollar reserves is uh, actually, would you call it an, an all-time high? Yeah. Uh, we have uh, more than enough uh, dollar reserves. And then maybe also because right now, I said the demand for imports is not that, it's not that, that high because of course the movements are also restricted. So, uh, what else? Because of you, because we have, we have enough dollars coming in. We have, uh, last June, the remittances have started to tick up again by about 7%. Another thing is because our BPOs are also bringing in the dollars. Yeah. So there are many, many factors that is contributing uh, the dollar inflow to the to the economy, but a lot of that comes from you, and thanks thanks to all of you. 
Okay, thank you, sir. So that actually determines uh, the factor it comes from us. <laughs> Next question, sir. Is it the best time to buy property now? Uh, uh, the whole the whole talk, the whole talk that I just had can be can be uh, can be uh, summarized into one word, which is actually yes. But let me qualify that. You see, you can make a bad investment during the good times. And you can make very good investment during bad times. Now, uh, if you are in the position to invest, if you have investable funds, if you have investable funds, then I would like to uh, throw back the question to you. If you want to buy a property, do you want to buy when the property is at a lower price, at a better term, with better options? Or do you want to buy when the price is high, when the price is high, when you have stiff terms and you have very few options? So it's, it's actually up to, to you. So for me, if I, have, if I have enough funds, if I have uh, investable funds, I will definitely, my only problem now is that there are a lot of properties that I, whenever I drive, I feel so sorry for myself because I want to buy this, I want to buy this, I want to invest here, I want to invest here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that much cash, but if I can just buy as many properties, the good properties that I see now, I would. Okay, sir. Thank you. That is, yes, the answer is yes. It's the best time. <laughs> Question number four. Sir, ano po advantage or disadvantage if not dual citizen if you're investing a property? Ano po ang advantage or disadvantage if not dual citizen if you're investing in property? Okay. Uh, okay, let me process this. Uh, no advantage or disadvantage if not dual. Also, this comes from somebody who's, who has converted yes. citizenship. Mm -hmm. nah, siguro. Okay. You see, Filipinos who have lost their citizenship can own properties in the Philippines, even landed properties, but limited, no? It's in the Foreign Investments Act. When a Filipino has lost his citizenship, can still own a residential or a raw land, uh, but a, a size of about 3,000 square meters for residential and five hectares for raw land, but they can exercise this only once, which means if I buy a residential land, land, and I 200 square meters, na exercise ko na yung right ko na yon. Even if hanggang 3,000 square meters yung allowed ako, uh, kung if I bought 200 square meters, that's it. You've exercised it. Na. So, <clears throat> if I want to buy another another property, then I'm allowed to buy one raw land naman. But if I've exercised both, well, and I've, I've, I've uh, consumed my, my rights now. This is where the advantage of dual citizenship comes in. Because if you're a dual citizen, then you can buy. You have the same right as a regular Filipino if you want to buy land. However, if you want to buy, if you want to invest in condominiums, it doesn't matter whether you're a dual citizen or, or, or not. I, because even foreigners can buy as many properties as they want, as long as each project does not exceed the 40% threshold. I hope. Uh, so, you know, advantage. If you're a double citizen, then you can buy as many landed properties. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you, sir, for your answer. Uh, we have another question. What is the tenancy demand percentage from the last quarter of 2019? So compare it from the start of lockdown pH versus today's percentage. Okay. According to for residential, the the vacancy rate uh, according to call years, no, depends uh, depends uh, area. In Makati, it was less than five percent. It was less than five percent. However, okay, oh, in in the Bay Area, it was only about three percent. On vacancy rate, okay. This was prior to the lockdown. Talagang wala kang makita sa, sa Bay Area. That's the reason why, you know how, you know what? One bedroom units, one bedroom units sa, sa Bay Area, 32 square meters, 36, renting at 70 to 80,000 per square. Pre-COVID, of course, because of the, the, the Pogos and the Chinese. So that's, that's, that's actually something, that's a data that we should not, be, be very dependent upon because sometimes when agents approach you, they show you this this current data. Uh, what I do is I have historical and I have the forecast. Now, what the agents will not tell you is that there will be about, ang expected that in 2020 is about 14,700 units will be turned over. That's, that's for the NCR now. Out of 14,700, 80% of that, or 85% of that, will be from the Paranaque side, which means a lot of that will be from the Bay Area. Nagkaroon ng lockdown. So, uh, nagkaroon ng lockdown, nagkaroon ng lockdown, work stoppage. So, a lot of those which were scheduled for completion in 2020 was pushed back. So it went down from 14,700 to 11,000. So out of 11,000, still 85% of that would be coming from the Bay Area. That's still a good 8,000 uh, 8, units. If tumuli yun, if tumuli yun, there will be 8,000 units fresh supply in the Bay Area as compared to uh, last year. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, if I tell you a figure which is in the charts, which is at 3%, just 3%, as I mo 3%, eh, lumabas yung 8,000 units. Lumabas yung 8,000 units. For a short while, makikita mo yung magbabalun yung gap until it is absorbed again. Until it is absorbed again. So, it depends on when. But again, just to answer this, last quarter of 2019, it was around that area, about 3%. In Bay Area. Okay. Makati is also around that, uh, five, 3 to 5%. Mm -hmm. In, uh, is it Philippines? Philippines. Mahirap, mahirap i, i quantify for the whole Philippines, for the whole Philippines. Uh, it's always better to be very specific. If I am advising a, a tenant, I'll give them figures on where they are eyeing, on which area they are eyeing, because I cannot give a general national figure for a specific area. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you for your answer. Yeah, it depends na naman on the location. Okay, oh, sir. Quiz, eh. <laughs> okay. Sir, another question from Australia. Hindi ko lang na-type, no? Sabi, developers in other countries offer rental guarantee for their pre-selling and RFO projects. Is this offered in the Philippines? True. Very, very, very true. Uh, we've done that. Okay. In 2007, it started there in 2007, 2006, 2007. You go to Singapore, you go to Malaysia, you'll see flyers. When, they, when they're campaigning for, for uh, presentations, 8% guaranteed income for the next two years, 8%. 
guaranteed income for the next uh, one year or two years. This is actually what you call a, a, a delayed discount, a reverse discount. Uh, instead of giving you the discount now, it, it's, a, it's a simple uh, uh, marketing gimmick though. Uh, the price, you just impute the discount and you just give the discount later on. In fact, the developers even save on that. Why? Because instead of giving you the discount now, 8%, okay, I'll just guarantee you, I'll guarantee uh, your income, your rental income uh, for two years, for one year, two years, whatever. Now, after the turnover, it gives time for the developer to look for tenants. If I'll be able to find tenants for you, if I'll be able to find tenants for you, then uh, I actually even save on the 8% that I promised you. You hear that? Okay. Uh, that's one. So that was, that was done in... in um, it started in 2006. However, I can cite to you some examples now uh, in the Philippines, wherein there are some developers who who are offering uh, guaranteed rentals, uh, but these are operated as most of these are operated as hotels. I mean, condo hotels. Condotels that have uh, condotels that are operated by by a third party operator. So what they do is that, okay, uh, you buy a unit and then you lease it back to them, and you lock it in for for the next 10, 20 years, depending on the contract of the hotel with the operate with the operator and the developer. So. I will be, uh, I will be operating your unit. I'll be operating your unit. Now they have some of them. They have a guaranteed rental, a guaranteed income. There's a guaranteed income, but there's no guaranteed figure. It will always be dependent on the occupancy rate. That's another. That's another model. I'll guarantee you every month you'll have an income whether your unit is occupied or not because it is in a pooled rental. It's in a rental pool. However, I'm not guaranteeing whether it's going to be 3% this month or maybe, maybe 3% or maybe 8%. So different kinds of guarantee. But the simplest kind of guarantee without a hotel operator is the delayed discount that I mentioned to you. It's, it's, a, it's a gimmick. Okay, okay. Thank you for answering. Yeah, it could be a marketing gimmick. The reason why I know that is because when I encountered that in Singapore in 2007, I told my boss here, hey, why not, why not do this from the previous company? Why not do this? You will actually save a lot. You just, you can actually just uh, add you can, in fact, add on the price. You add on the price, the selling price. No? Let's say that 8% or 10%. Mm -hmm. And then, because when you, when you tell the people, oh, we have uh, guaranteed income, guaranteed rental for the next two, for two years after this turned over. Now, uh, it's, just, it's just like delaying the discount. But if the developer finds a tenant for your unit, they keep the money, then they keep the discount. Works for the developers. I it's see. actually a good gimmick. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir, for sharing that. We have last two questions. What is the status of real estate selling in general in the Philippines? Okay, in general, for though uh, I, I have spoken in the uh, in in several. Uh, brokers organizations in, in the country. I told them, look, this is the time wherein you don't have to, you don't have to wait for things to bounce back. This is the time to shift and adapt. I've always been selling the super high and the super high end uh, 
projects. However, the the demand now, the demand now is more on the affordable. Maybe, maybe from about, it starts from the 1.5 to about 5 million. 1.5, 4 million. This is the price range now that is moving, moving very, very fast. Moving very fast, especially out in the, in the outskirts. Uh, it's not me saying this, but you see even, even the, the, the survey shows that Batangas, uh, Batangas, Laguna, Cavite, Pampanga is doing very well, uh, especially at those price points. That's why I told the agents, look, you want to wait? You want to wait for the next year? Okay, go ahead. You want to go for brokerage, secondary market? Go ahead. But I'm building teams. I'm building teams who are selling the affordable, affordable uh, properties, especially in that range, that is moving. Because that is, uh, these are first homes. These are, these are, what's this? A lot of them also are either first homeowners or first investments. And this is very affordable. And especially who are the ones who have stable jobs? Those who, especially the, the OFWs, the price points learn the, the critical price points, uh, you know, like I said, it has to be within their affordability. So, real estate selling in general, uh, let's say bad, because ima imagine there are about what, 70,000 brokers plus a lot of agents, hundreds of thousands of agents. If they don't know what project to sell, if they don't know how to sell, and if they don't know, they're still insisting on, if I insisted on selling super high-end projects, then, uh, I mean, I would be saying that's bad business. But you, uh, what's this? Isa, you've been seeing my, my posts and you see a lot of my agents. I congratulate them every, every, every almost every day. This one sells uh, almost every day. So. It depends if they know where to sell, what to sell, and how to reach the market. Right. There's a lot of buyers, a lot of buyers. Okay, thank you, sir. It really says what is done to research, no? And by yes. profiling. Okay. Hey, sir, another question. How can you compare the buyer's profile who bought pre-COVID versus post-COVID? Okay, one... Uh, we're not yet in that uh, pre-COVID or uh, during COVID. I think, yeah, that's a good overview. That's your phrase. Yeah, because we're not in that period yet. No? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Buyer's profile. What I can say now is that there are more OFWs, Actually, ngayon balance eh. Two, why? Two reasons. Right now, the OFWs are already realizing that, I mean, they should not be wasting their time on, on other luxury projects, sending rubber shoes or sending gadgets or whatnot. But now, prioritize first real estate. For the local market naman, a lot of people a lot of uh, people, na, since they cannot go shopping, uh, they cannot go shopping. Okay, my, my, my wife, my wife, uh, at least sa Lazada na lang nagtsatsaga yan. But you see Lazada delivery every day. But you see, a lot of people still want to go. They realize now that they just need the essentials. Luxury items. For the past five months, people know now how to appreciate value. They know what's important now. Nasa yung bags nyo ngayon? Nasa yung watches nyo ngayon? Nobody can see it. So, a lot of savings for those who are making money. There's a lot of savings. And they appreciate now the value of income generating properties. So, yun yung sinasabi nga, no? The buyer's profile before appreciate, before siguro parang 
Wala, may nag-offer lang eh. Uh, the, 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 shortest, the shortest way to describe the, the buyers during COVID and pre-COVID is the buyers during the COVID are more intentional. They really want to buy because they now appreciate the need. Hindi yung kagaya before, di ba? You deploy agents all over the world. And then they see the ads, oh, it's nice, it's nice. Okay, and then by, by emotions or uh, they were impressed by the, the brochures or what. No? And then they buy. But now it's more intentional. They want to buy because they need, it's not only they want, they need an investment. They appreciate the, the, the investment. They appreciate real estate. So, yun. The difference, they are more intentional now. Okay, I see. Thank you, sir. More on intentional for intentional buying. Sir, another question. Madami nagtatanong. Uh, di ko lang... <laughs> Why non-Filipinos or former Filipino citizens have higher interest rates from bank loans in the Philippines? Okay. Uh, I think this one, I still have to... I still have to uh, validate now because yesterday I attended one of the presentations of one of the banks. I think now foreigners, uh, especially those who are not based here, uh, Medu will be having a harder time to, to, to borrow. Mm -hmm. may may unless they have business here or they are married to the Filipina. Uh, because right now, because of uncertainty, you know, uh, the banks now are more prudent in their, in their lending. But in terms of, you mean uh, interest rates from the banks? Mm-hmm. You can question, yes, sir. Non-Filipinos... You mean... Uh, Former Filipino citizens. Ah, okay. So, not foreigners, but former Filipino citizens. Yes. Okay. That one, I, I cannot answer for the banks. So these banks have their own internal uh, policies. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, that one, mm -hmm. I don't know the, each internal policy of, of the banks. So. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, another question. Um, how do I determine the value of an investment property? Potential. When you say, how do you determine the value, what will it what, what will be its value or how do you appraise the value? Kasi? They did not elaborate. It says, how do I determine the value of an investment property? Yeah, nga, because we can, we, can, uh, we can interpret it two ways. Mm -hmm. uh, you see a house, 15 million. Is it really worth 15 million? You have to have it appraised. So it, that's one way to to evaluate the value, diba? you have it appraised. Now, the other question is, how do you determine the value? Is it a good buy? Is it a good? Is it a good property? Is it? Uh, does it have a good potential? So, in <clears throat> I, I'm confused with with the question. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. So two ways, sir. If you want to determine the value of a property, of an investment property, then you have it appraised. That's the only way to, to, to do that. Now, if you want to value the investment of the property, where, it, where if it's good, good or bad investment, is you look for its potential. When you look for its potential, you look for its uniqueness, you look, you look for, for the market, you look if there's a market for future sale, you look for if there's a market for future tenants, you look for the competition, and you look for the availability of similar units in the market. Mm -hmm. 
No copy that, sir. Copy. Okay, so I think this is um, the, our last question. Oops. If I am a ready investor from Singapore, this is a question from Singapore, what should only be the reason not to invest? I'm a ready investor. Okay. What is what should be the only reason not to invest? Uh, okay. I'll surely give you two two I'll give you two reasons. One, if you can really find something which is a better which offers a better uh, uh, alternative higher returns, higher returns and safer. Uh, of course, I will always go towards that direction. If, if there's an investment where I can put my money with, with uh, lesser risk, with higher returns, I'll go there. So I will not invest in real estate anymore, number one. Number two, if I want to invest, but uh, my, my funds is just sufficient and I don't know. Remember, we are in, in this period of uncertainty. Even if all the, all the charts, all the graphs that I showed you showed a very positive expectation by next year. Again, nobody knows. So the reason why I was, I was uh, emphasizing earlier that if you have stash if you have a safety stash, which will be good for the next one year, two years, which will not affect your budget, go ahead. You should, you should invest. But if I don't have enough funds, if I don't have enough funds, or I know, I don't know if I will still have a job tomorrow. If the line of my job is not in that resilient industry, uh, then maybe I will not invest yet. See, it depends on your investment capacity. Okay, I don't want, I'm not the kind of salesman who, who twists arms, just, okay, just buy. I, I don't care about if you, if you default or what. I always want my buyers to, to feel safe. Uh, to feel safe and to continue their investments because there's no sense in forcing somebody to buy if they will just default in the middle. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't I advise them against it. So what I ask them is uh, very simple. You want to proceed? Yes. Okay. If worst case scenario, sir, ma'am, if in case, Something happens. Something happens. Uh, maybe lost your job or bad with business. Can you still sustain the amortization for at least the next six months? If they say yes, okay. You believe you can recover within the next six months? Yes. Okay, then let's proceed. But if not, uh, I'll just tell them to... to uh, better do it when they are more comfortable, especially during the, during this time. Okay, thank you, sir. Good points, two, two very good answers. Okay, thank you very much, sir Andy. That actually ends our QA. So <laughs> thank you, sir Andy, so for sharing your time with us and also to everyone. And on behalf of uh, Century Properties and Century Sales Management, this has been your host, Isa Da Costa, together with our team. Again, maraming maraming salamat po and ingat po sa lahat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, stay safe. Stay home.